Well, let's see if we can jump in. Um, if you don't mind, let me start with something tricky for both of us. Um, what are you, when you fear, what do you fear? Um, not, you know, the very banal things, not mm -hmm. being able to have a roof over my head. Yeah. Is, um, and I think I've, you know, it's, it's, a, bit of, it's a bit urgent now, um, but I remember having this urgent fear too about not having a roof over my head when I moved to the United States. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anybody. And um, yeah, so, so, so that fear is back, uh, um, kind of very present, not being able to pay rent and not, you know, not being able to have a roof over their head. That's, that's, that's a big fear. Does it feel like a kind of repeat somehow from before? You're in such a different position in your life and your sort of um, influence, if you will, but the, the work that you've made since that time, uh, does it feel like a dialing back to that moment? No, it, it doesn't feel like a dialing back. Um, uh, that moment, I felt like the well, there are two two similarities. Is there's always no safety net, so I've always felt like there's no safety net. Yeah. Um, but in the beginning, there was just uh, it was a black void, a, a, a lack of understanding um, the new territories, kind of the new ideologies I was dealing with, and yet also knowing that I couldn't return uh, back home, whatever that is, with my, uh, with the, my tail between my legs. Um, so there was also kind of a determination to see it out, whatever awaited me. Um, at this moment, um, I, I, I feel like the, I, I, I have some kind of way to, uh, uh, I, have, uh, I could return and not with my tail between my legs. So that's different. Uh, but also this um, danger is interesting to me because it's not, it's, it's beyond just the, uh, the, uh, the fear of being homelessness. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a question of what does the work look like? Uh, so different types of homes seem to be disappearing. Uh, the theater space, uh, these experimental spaces, um, yeah, the, the proximity to other humans. Uh, so yeah, so I'm thinking uh, of, of, of this being homeless um, kind of in a, in, in, a, in a bigger way. So yeah, no, it's not the same place. Um, it's a different space. There's something in there that I think about a lot with collaborators on the kinds of projects I work on in terms of um, kind of recognizing where now is. And I wonder, you know, as we improvise, we have to decide that we're going to be okay with something to begin from. And mm -hmm. even being, you know, maybe being in the space of fear would be a place to begin from. But then there's a claiming of a space um, mm -hmm. that kind of maybe for me just helps helps me remember or realize or activate a kind of um, possibility or a going. Um, so that's what I hear in what you're saying, that it's not the same and you have different resources. So in that moment of acknowledging that there are some resources, even as other things, as you say, are um, changing, disappearing, being disappeared. Um, to be, you know, I, I think this word privilege is being thrown around so much these days. Like, oh, we have the privilege to be indoors, we have the privilege to um, um, whatever. Um, I, I don't know if it's a, if it's a privilege, it's um, um, being alive. Yeah. <laughs> um, but there is, it seems to me like we are being charged uh, asked uh, to go beyond um, what uh, whatever we thought we could be. Like, you know, I, it feels like 
uh, we weren't using, oh, I feel like I wasn't using my full brain. Like, uh, <laughs> you know, now, it feels now like there is so much at stake um, and, 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 and that, that it, feels, it feels also like a curse, not, not a privilege to think beyond, um, you know, why, why is culture essential? You know, like, do we need to make another dance, um, another play, another, why, why is that important? Um, when we know very well that there are people who are dying because there's no water to just wash their hands. So, you know, like to return to some really um, proper questions. <laughs> that's that's also a grounding, right? Like that's that's a grounding. Like you know, why does it matter? And if it continues, it has to be different. We have to innovate beyond what we were doing before. This is exactly right. And yeah, there's no, there's no doubt in this and that some things will snap back. Like, you know, as we say, bad hair and um, white racism, white supremacy. Other things though, we, we have to rethink and reactivate. We just have to do them differently now. And as we um, imagine forward, um, let's go to this theme of endurance. We brought that up last time and I wanted yeah. to get in there a bit and, and see how you think of that. Um, maybe it's tied to this question of innovation. I don't know if I like that word though. Um, maybe just the idea of um, uh, imagining on or uh, yeah, what is an endurance doing for you as a, as a way to think about how you are? Um, and that's, that's also, that could go in so many ways. Like if you, if, if I think of um, the things that drive me, which is, justice so a question of injustice like i i think i've always been driven by a question of injustice um or a desire towards justness um so yeah endurance towards uh, towards that uh and and it seems like that as a target just justice justness keeps moving like that horizon at the ocean it just keeps moving away um what so i i feel in in many ways um somewhat revolutionary about it like you know we have to endure this so that we um we we, we keep reaching towards justness our uh, justice uh we as a species um uh say uh subspecies of black humans have endured um, you know, so many historical um, injustices. So it feels like Corona uh, virus is really a small player <laughs> in the terms of, you know, like the historical endurances that uh, have been brought to bear on uh, bodies that are such, such as ours. Um, and who am I to, you know, to kind of use the Mandela language, who am I <laughs> to succumb to this, you know, at this moment where there is still so much to address, uh, there, is, there is so much to address, um, uh, even for our futures, you know. Um, so yeah, endurance uh, in terms of uh, historical kind of uh, injustices, endurance in terms of spiritual need to, to be here, um, to create a space for a future generations, um, endurance in, in terms of like just stamina, a physical stamina um, to get through the long hours as we move into summer. <laughs> you know, um, on, on, that, on that scale, endurance, um, to endure and then i then then i think about you know so 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 even going into another subspecies subspecies uh endurance um in terms of the black woman endurance you know i think of my grandmother i think you know uh, i think of my mother uh, i think of my sisters i think of my my um nieces uh, and I think, oh, uh, yeah, there's so much work to do. <laughs> so one has to endure, uh, meaning gather up all the 
all the courage, all the stamina, all the wits uh, to keep putting another foot forward. Yeah, I, th I, I, I probably went all over the place, but that's kind of what I'm thinking about endurance. I, I, I feel really a, a need to um, do something for people coming in the future. Um, I need to pay my respects uh, to my grannies. <laughs> <laughs> you know because when I think about what they had and what I have and what could be yeah it's, it seems like there's so much work to do yeah there were two amazing formations in that that popped out for me because I have been writing about just this idea of just what you said there's so much to do there's so much work to be done but this idea of who am I to to kind of stop working or to fall apart um, even as faced with something that's more and more difficult and more and more uh, maybe scary and more and more um, unsure. Uh, but also as an experimental artist, it's like we have, again, resources to uh, find a way where there doesn't seem to be a way or to be insistent or, as you say, to be um, to endure and to make a space for something that needs to be um, and then stay committed to that needing to be. Uh, you know, it doesn't mean that we don't need rest and we don't need yeah. time away, but we also have resources and it kind of is the, uh, the road to become a, a, an experimental artist is to do this work towards a kind of justice. I'm really uh, compelled by the way you're separating just is and, and, and just ness and the, the just in the English kind of, um, rhetorical way that also means an everydayness so it means the particularity but it also means a justness like we yeah. need to keep going so there is something about endurance inside that word that's helping me think about it differently justness yeah mm -hmm. c'est juste it's, <laughs> it's yeah it's just right you know um even in in terms of like if you were cooking it's just you know, uh, yeah, yeah, simple everydayness. And in, in some ways, that's how uh, I would say my, my you know, because I, I keep going back to my mother and my grandmother because within uh, 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 two generations, uh, huge historical change. Um, you know, my grandmother who was born probably as Cecil John Rhodes, you know, like, you know, around that area, around that time, historical time, um, with, um, and who I knew up to, I uh, was like, maybe um, uh, 16 or something, um, you know, and to understand that within a, a family cluster, um, we had uh, people who, for whom English was completely an alien language. Um, to my mom, who went as far as finished high school, who, who she had some way with English. Um, to me, <laughs> you know, um, somehow, you know, something, something really uh, magnificent and scary. <laughs> to have access to so so much history so much change in such a short amount of time you know yeah so again who 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 am i to um not give it my best uh to not try um especially if i have been allowed the sacrifice of others to kind of reach into this capacity of the mind somehow the freedom to think uh, or to exercise even that, um, the, the, the thinking that I have the freedom to think, <laughs> maybe I don't, but to even exercise that. I'm, I, I feel that very profoundly um, and, and want to return to remembering uh, from whence I came. <laughs> You know, so, so, so not just to like, yeah, Brooklyn is, is fantastic. Being outside um, of, uh, of uh, you know, one's 
base of origin is is really really super fantastic uh but but always to know that i carry maybe in the dna um something uh of of that desire uh for a justice and and that the only way that my grandmother could deal with it was through justness the everydayness you know just keep going <laughs> Just, just, just keep going, and I think, I think you know, uh, black women. Um, I, you know, I was trying. I don't know if I said this to you last time we talked. I, I've been really, really invested in trying to articulate some kind of um, uh, uh, thesis around, you know, um, the black woman, um, and not in the same way that I think uh, Hortense Spiller speaks about it, even though that that really. Sure. touches um every every bone yes. you know the separation of flesh and body um but i i try to think of that um for what happened uh, to the african woman on the continent mm -hmm. and um her continued invisibility yeah. uh you know and and to think about those women um uh who, for instance, you know, I have family members who are working in those services that have suddenly deemed, uh, been deemed essential uh, to what risk, you know, caregivers, you know. <laughs> I don't know. It's 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 deep. It's deep, Tommy. So 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 to 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 have an opportunity um, to to work in spaces where you're not um in harm's way yes. uh the only harm you could do is probably mediocrity <laughs> and that can hurt sister that can hurt a lot <laughs> <laughs> but i do understand what you mean it's not the same kind of hurt mm -hmm. it's not it's not the same kind of hurt so yeah I'm thinking a lot about um these provocations um yeah. The yeah, future is. That's right. There's something there also about bringing, bringing things together and reweaving them or retying them. Um, you know, our people are always with us. I think about my grandmother was a professional dancer briefly in her life. Uh, you know, like a show dancer, and I think of her all the time. But in this um, social distancing moment. Uh, I have an affordance to bring her more presently in kind of the day and the writing that I'm doing now or the stretching that I do and imagining alongside her. She's still here, you know, she didn't go away. Um, but then how can I help share that story or let it help inspire me towards the things I do, male presenting, um, making space, getting out of the way, all the things that are urgent to me in my own sort of um, sort yes. of the sort of registers of values and living life. Yes, and all these uh, just places and platforms that you create for us all. You know, that the, the work is um, so deeply in, uh, last, last time we spoke, you talked of this word entanglement, yes. um, that, that the work you do is so entangled with this question of love. Mm. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah, it has to be love. That's, that's so great to move towards social distancing and love because <laughs> it's like this question now is just so clear. You know, maybe we can love people we already were in love with. And you know, I'm quite a bit in love with you. I think you know that. Um, I'm in love with you. Way. Right. Exactly. <laughs> But then how do we come to love people we haven't met except through these interfaces? What is love in social distancing? How will we love? Uh, our ideas, um, you know, um, the ideas uh, that, that we stand for, our, our, mm -hmm. the visions that we bring forth, um, kind of the generosity of uh, the, uh, the sharing of uh, uh, the knowledges, the ideas that we have. Um, I, I think I think of that as, as as love too, including this 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 sensing feeling that the spirit is with us. As you say, grandmas are always with us, as our, our, our uncles, you know, 
um, always with us. That's love too. Um, you know, to not forget or to not ignore, to sense, to feel, and then to share the stories through being the best that we can. Uh, and then a greater love for uh, the human species um, and always trying to be uh, generous and kind. <laughs> <laughs> You know, kindness, caring, sharing, sharing, you know, so these platforms that, so yeah, love that even though, you know, we are using um, uh, distance, um, I, I, I have a feeling that we've never been more closer, you know, in a way, mm. um, you know, checking in on people who you went to high school with, like, <laughs> 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 Who is it? Okay. <laughs> it's true. It's true. That's, that's, that's really, really amazing. Well, just, just discovering, um, you know, different platforms that are, are more present now um, because we have the time maybe um, to, 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 to see them. Uh, people are being asked to, you know, share in ways that... Um, um, it's not maybe it's not so democratizing in a way, um, but I'm, I'm talking about you know like um, I've been following this uh, uh, DM25 um, mm. group. They, it's it's mostly uh, European kind yeah. of Eastern European um, uh, focus, but Europe anyway. Uh, very left of left. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> Um, and just excited um, in, in what they're doing. So they have a little TV thing every day. They're talking to people nice. um, about all manner of things. Um, uh, you know, so, you know, discovering like-minded people yeah. um, who I would never have discovered before if we weren't really forced to um, kind of slow down um, and listen in a way. So yeah, that's 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 love for you, um, and not the romantic kind of um, thing, which that's fun too. I mean, yeah, that's, that's fun too. That's something else. Yeah, I've been uh, the last couple of years when chatting with um, researchers and artists who want to go back into advanced study. Um, we've been talking about slowing down, kind of slow movement, but especially reflection time and. Mm -hmm. and sort of shifting, making the time queer, making the time colored or black, um, reor reorienting towards time as a way to kind of express um, a caring and a moving towards. And I think of those as being tied up in this idea of love, the way you're narrating it, this a willingness to be able to listen and pay attention differently. And I always try to use this language of moving towards. We, we want to figure out how to move towards each other even as we disagree and know really different things. And we still have this, this affordance to be entangled and move towards each other. Not, not you know, through ridiculousnesses, but yeah. through, you know, through a possibility of, of a kind of care and slowing down. So maybe there's something about that inside this moment, but that's different from social distancing. Let's talk yeah, about that a yeah, little bit more. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the distancing, you know, um, I think I also expressed to you that, you yeah. know, I'm, I, I'm, uh, I live in Fulton. Um, uh, I'm in Fulton area in Brooklyn. Don't know if I should really say that. But, but anyway, um, the, the area is um, largely a working class, which also in American <laughs> kind of lingo means largely black. Um, so the question, uh, you know, physical, I mean, I, I've always thought as a person who uses the body as kind of the tool, um, to think through that in general, uh, people have no, um, uh, awareness of space, you know, like, like this, you know, like even the sidewalk thing to me is not so much about race as, you know, people's inability to kind of actually see space. Um, uh, or read space. Um, so I feel that at this moment I have a hyper awareness of, uh, you know, this question of social distance. 
Um, when I go to my grocery store, I've been noticing, you know, over as weeks of passing, that it was just chaos, incomprehension to kind of a slightly rude space now, I guess people are use, losing their um, uh, stamina, <laughs> their yeah. tolerance. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 it's getting edgier and yeah. rude. <laughs> Um, you know, so the question of social distance is really a complicated, it, it, it's, it's, it's a complicated one um, with its sister or partner self-isolating, um, you know, that I've, I've been really also thinking about, um, I, I think as bodies who come from trauma, and, and I'm thinking ab about, you know, uh, uh, either colonial trauma or you know enslavement trauma the, the trauma that has been visited to the black body mm -hmm. um uh seems to you know post-colonial trauma whatever coloniality that we're in now that we carry so much trauma in the body that makes the question of social distancing um a, a, a little bit challenging that perhaps as a survival thing, uh, we gravitate towards closing the space and, and to kind of a uh, uh, herd, be in a herd with others. Um, and I, I have a certain love for that. <laughs> Even, even even in the grocery store, so I'm just like, okay, calm down, people. We don't, we don't have to start sucking the teeth. <laughs> you know, but, but I have a certain affinity for this refusal to distance. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's, there's an agitation towards refusing the distance. Yeah. And, and, and the only way I can kind of approach it is there's so much trauma in our bodies That's right. uh, that we know that if we are alone, uh, a lot of damage could be done onto us and that it is better, even, even if we're strangers, to kind of lean towards each other. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, I agree with you. I think it's quite built into our sort of infrastructure as, as people, not as individuals, but as people yeah. to, to want to be near and then sometimes to need to be apart. But this is quite different, um, this current situation. But I do think that when we're out and about, there is a kind of, oh, there's finally someone to lean towards or be near or to smell or, and I do think it's instinctive too. So I think it's difficult. To, well, maybe this is cultural as well, but to hold myself, to hold back and just, you know, I'm not going to come near you or, you know, I'm not going yeah. to make that effort to exactly what I was saying before, to move towards you, uh, literally. Yeah. So it's super, super challenging and it's super um, awkward. It's just... Right. Especially as, you, as I agree with you, I think that's our hardware as, as uh, the human animal, mm -hmm. as we have to use our smell. <laughs> You know, this is, so, so, you know, all the senses, all these kind of very primitive ways of understanding danger. Yeah. Uh, you know, or safety or, you know, um, yeah, that, that we have that. And it, it feels somehow heightened at this moment. Those senses seem kind of vibrant and alive. <laughs> Even as we're being asked to kind of, uh, you know, um, you know, keep keep the distance and stuff. So, you know, I, I think last week we spoke about also what it could mean to return, if if we could even picture a return to um, performance live work, hmm. uh, what that social distance, um, you know, uh, could mean. Um, and I have to say, I I I I I, I don't feel. It's too hopeful that we will quickly return to a space where we feel encouraged to uh, mm. kind of close the gate to the the gap um, and listening to what's happening in Europe and others. You know, um, all of my families in Africa had there was there was just a sheer panic. Uh, because we are also market people. Yes. Um, so <laughs> the idea of, 
of keeping the distance uh, was rigorously <laughs> fought. <laughs> And, and and just for daily survival, like you know, it, it just it just didn't quite happen, uh, you know, because people don't go to buy food in a grocery store. People go to a market. Yes. Um, you know, so in some ways, I think maybe there are spaces such as the African continent where maybe people would be able and willing um, to return to you know performances. Uh, because the, the, the amounts of space uh, between them um, have never actually disappeared, you know. Um, you know, and also in, in townships, high density yeah. spaces where um, it's just laws of the jungle, the strongest survive, basically. Um, but in terms of this kind of art market, experimental art, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm curious how long uh, we will be asked to go month by month, you know, like, um, you know, okay, now we're waiting for September to fall, we worked it, you know, like right. how we will be kept on this leash of just anticipation, uh, you know, anticipating uh, are those dates going to be maintained? Like, I wonder how long that's going to. Yeah, there I'm right with you. That's, that's you know, we, neither of us have crystal balls and we're not asking each other to. Um, I do think that the human animal, as we're saying, needs to be near. So at some point, something will, will re-articulate that feels maybe something like what there was, I know in Oslo, I was talking to a friend who runs a dance company there, um, Thomas Presto, and they're opening up the studios there um, next week with five people or fewer. And then wow. they have this policy of cleaning. There's a whole cleaning um, sort of regimen that's around before and after um, so that there are never appointments that go one to the next, but there's a, a, an in-between time where the spaces are clean in a certain That's time. amazing. Um, but that's, they've kept, you know, their numbers are very low. The population is much smaller than even New York. I think the, the entire country is a smaller population than New York City in some ways. Um, so there's a different, different kind of concern and opening out. But I do think that this idea of streaming performance and, you know, some in person, some in, um, in streaming or media platforms in terms of attendance, and monetizing that, you know, that seems like that's pretty uh, clearly going to be one thing that will be possible if not um, really supported. Yeah, for, yeah. For, for instance, if you have, you know, the 30 or 50 people who are yeah. supposed to be in a space and then uh, everything else is beamed out, so exactly. you have an indoor, out, out, uh, inside, outside. Sure kind of, um, or even, you know, one of my friends is thinking of a more radical kind of one-on-one -on -one performances. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It'd be hard to make a living, but. <laughs> but, but, you know, also questioning this whole thing of the industry, of the business, yeah. of, yeah. of it all, um, which seems a, a, a seductive thought, you know, uh, could we even imagine um, the whole art world um, uh, disappearing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, what do we do with all those buildings? It's, it's a real question. I was thinking about that this week. And in terms of teaching dance lessons at, in higher ed, you know, I have so many friends who teach uh, dance in college systems, and now they're doing it from home. And at some point, the universities that are struggling will realize that those studios could be used for something else. And uh, that, that also could be an outcome here that we want to be attentive to, to see kind of how this yeah. all unfolds. Because if someone can teach a, a sort of recognizable modern one class from their bedroom, <laughs> 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 I don't know. <laughs> you need all those sprung floors and the mirrors, you know, and, you know, um, all, all that. Um, it's, it's interesting because also I think um, to think of, uh, you know, the, the world as bigger uh, than the, um, the developed uh, economies. Yes. Um, that um, working outside 
uh, has been the way for many people. I mean, I think of it called Islam. Uh, I mean, it just has, a, you know, a, a, a roof to kind of shelter somewhat from the, uh, but the idea is to be in nature. Yes. Uh, Anna Halprin, you know, I mean, even though, you know, she does has also the option of an indoor studio, uh, but there's something really, really exciting about um, the ability to work outdoors and to uh, foreground those spaces as real spaces uh, for working. And, 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 and in terms of also thinking about uh, uh, Mother Earth and our questions, is it 12 years left of, uh, you know, this right. world to be, you know, it's, it seems to me that um, the connection uh, uh, with the land and, and the great outdoors um, that we can do that. We can, we can work uh, and we don't lose anything by not having mirrors mm -hmm. uh, or not having, uh, you know, I mean, the, the natural earth is as sprung as, you know, is <laughs> that, that, than the wooden floor <laughs> anyways. So, you know, that, that's also interesting, you know, um, to uh, think uh, uh, in, in those terms that maybe we're being liberated uh, from these uh, closed spaces. Let's, let's turn that towards a bit about the work you've been up to. Um, so I had this kind of thought of provocation in a time of provocation. So yes. there's a way that, you know, Mother Earth has been provoked and maybe part of what COVID is, is Mother Earth responding in, in a, a certain kind of way, even though it's a virus. Um, what is it to provoke through our creative sort of address in a time when we're all, all already provoked. How are you thinking about this, this kind of activity of provocation in artistry? Um, <laughs> that's, really, that's really because um, in, uh, before uh, this moment, uh, the provocation for me has always had to do with power. Yeah. Spaces of power to enter those spaces um, that um, would have been denied my grandmother and sure. do untoward things in, in them. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so there, you know, um, and that has been, you know, a kind of provocation that has, you know, s you know sustained a, a, a certain kind of uh, aesthetic uh, in a way, um, do I think that's a worthwhile uh, provocation in this moment? Um, I, you know, I don't, I don't think so. Of course, I, I, I feel that um, maybe the provocation has to be more subtle now. The provocation to really think uh, um, uh, a less in your face. Uh, I mean, there's something generous also about that in-your-face uh, provocation because, you know, it's just like, I'm doing all the work for you. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking exactly that, you know, we need models for how to resist. And something I tend to think of when I'm in the presence of your work is this modeling of resistance and endurance and provocation. And it reminds me that, oh, yes, I actually have those capacities as well. Uh, and I do think that's something that art does that reminds us of things that maybe have been dormant or we never knew we had forgotten. So I feel that in your work, this idea that the you doing the labor, you know, does help me understand how yeah. to do some of the work myself too. Yeah, but I but I'm I am really thinking, you know, when when this when the body is not welcome in that same way, yeah. you know, yeah. because I, I really have um loved this uh, eyeball to eyeball like choreographing that space and that energy that uh that heat between uh um between us is the thing um so uh, how else you know to mm. think about mm. the provocation mm. um the the insistence to uh not disappear i think is a is a provocation that um uh is is exciting i uh, I will not disappear because I don't have uh, the technology to stay present, you know, because there are 
uh, and I'm thinking beyond myself here, yeah. there are tons of um, artists who don't have the capacity, That's right. um, either because of load shedding, which means power outages, or, you know, the, the kind of broadband, broad width, whatever, to do these kind of things. Um, so I think, I think the, the, to think of ways where we persist, um, you know, whether it's through, uh, I, I don't know, writing, I, 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 th I, I, I'm, I'm, I feel drawn to the idea of writing as a performance, yeah. um, uh, to audio, to speaking, uh, to sound creation, as as a performance i'm i'm drawn to 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 these things i'm drawn even to ways in which we make cinema um you know um to pull it towards um uh towards us in the way the body moves you know in in this way i'm thinking also of the work of arthur jaffer and and yeah. that you know that um that works uh, is especially you know apex or something uh um uh, i i i dreams are no um not dreams are called as in death uh, or maybe that is or um yeah. yeah but but um there is something really visceral kinesthetic um you know uh like like the blood pumping um you know maybe they and and it seems to me that the technology that he's using to get to that is really uh in some ways accessible you know it's not a big hollywood <laughs> production say you know so i'm thinking about ways in which you know uh uh, uh we use hand eye coordination um, how we can produce more texts, how we can, you know, uh, scribble, dabble in this. <laughs> you know, and, and none of this is, is kind of new in a way, Tommy, right? Yeah. Um, uh, I, I, you know, I think of all these happenings, the history of the happenings, sure. people rolling around making body paintings um, and stuff like this that, you know, um, maybe these are, or, or provocations that will return mm. in this time. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense that there's a way that, again, it's like a Mobius strip or black time, colored people time, African time, queer time, time, it, it, it reparses itself and re, reappears. Things, they repeat, but they're not the same. But there's mm. essences that are so useful and productive along the way. Um, but yeah, looking at some of these other models and keeping things a little more DIY, like what can you do now? Not, oh, if I had the studios of some, some amazing place, I could do this amazing dance film or something like that. Exactly. Like I was, you know, I mean, I'm really forced to think about how I'm making this opera without, <laughs> you know, outside mm -hmm. of those things. And I'm really excited about, uh, you know, making an audio book, you know, okay. just the, the storytelling, you know, um, old, old fashioned, you know, <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. all those things about Anansi and the spider, Br'er Rabbit, or, you know, I mean, I, I, I think genius ways in which, um, you know, I also have a, 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 a background of having done radio plays yes so i'm thinking very much about radio and and um i grew up with radio i didn't have tv at all um so and and how uh, uh words and, and the, the the way uh um, voice shapes the imagination how perhaps that is in the interim until we return to wherever we're going that that's a, such a beautiful way of igniting the imagination yeah that's it's such a great point and i was thinking about um my husband was telling me that this the pollution has dissipated so much over places like the inland empire because people aren't driving and when i used to commute to boston from new york i would drive that like twice a week those three hours three and a half hours but I would listen to books on tape and I would listen to people tell stories or read texts and and take those ideas in as a way to kind of not pass the time, but to sort of inc incite something. 
So mm -hmm. you know, I'm just a huge fan of this idea of, of a kind of listening sort of theater. Um, but it's quite familiar to me when I was commuting more. And, you know, there is something about this less driving has changed, uh, obviously, the price of oil. And we're all actually entangled in the price of oil, whether you knew it or not. Like, that's yeah. part of what's happening is how oil is priced. Uh, but at the same time, it's, it's reducing a certain kind of pollution um, all over the planet simultaneously in a way that really hadn't happened. Um, which, which would have not happened if it wasn't for this uh, yeah. tiny invisible. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's, 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 it's magical. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and do we, it, you know, staying with this audio thing, I, I, I feel that um, it, there is a way that the, 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 the neurons are fired, um, uh, uh, you know, and, and the cells are excited. <laughs> You know, yeah, all those, you know, fine, very refined ways in which, you know, the body works, you know, with outside of this big gesture, sure. uh, you know, and that I, I'm excited to kind of think, um, you know, towards uh, those kind of, uh, let's say even products for lack of a better word. Um, you know, that, you know, they could also be deliverable. Yeah. Yeah. And, and shareable. Yeah. Practices, uh, products, other kinds of ways to, to be engaged in creative address and sharing out. Yeah. What are you doing for spirit? What are you doing for your spirit practice during this time of lockdown? Well, you know, I'm an animist. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> So that that uh, that practice um, has never changed, um, and probably will not change. Maybe deepen as I understand more about how to be uh, just be one with all the other living um, everything that has agency. Mm -hmm. You know, so you know, um, I, I was. Uh, yeah, so 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 I I I was going to say I was uh, really raised um, kind of atheist in a way, um, or, or, or with a with a parent who um, was um, uh, a single mom who wasn't uh, uh, religious in any way, but was very um, much aware of the animist practices and, and not too far from it, you know, since my grandmother is an animist and, you know, clearly my mother was, you know, 90 times, 90% 90 of the time an animist. And I have chosen actually, so, 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 as when I say I'm an, I'm an animist and like I'm born into that, but I've also chosen, yeah. you know, like a actively chosen that as a, as a preferred way to, uh, 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 live my spiritual life, um, uh, um, and, and, and be just having this constant awareness that everything has, um, uh, uh, agency has presence and, and respect, um, respect everything, uh, respect everyone, um, and, and always be mindful. I, I think that's the one thing about our animism is a mindfulness. Mm. Uh, mindfulness that you can you can shape you know your thoughts by just being mindful um, you know and, and I know this is probably tying into other ways of uh, spirituality uh, but a, a mindfulness and a gratitude for this life <laughs> <laughs> You know, and, and, and wanting, wanting that, um, too, for everyone. Mm -hmm. Wanting that, too, for everyone, uh, not just for myself. Yeah, because it's, it's quite useless. Um, we have the, uh, the, the thing that separates um, uh, what I do from witchcraft or sorcery mm -hmm. is when you don't wish that for everyone else. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you wish ill for others, then, uh, then it's, uh, um, it's sorcery, it's witchcraft. It's no longer uh, the, uh, this, this uh, animist um, way. 
Yeah, that's, that's, that's amazing. I was thinking of, um, I tend to talk about making stuff as alchemy because, you know, literally you're uh, yeah. trying to figure out how to offer another alternative to something or even just to time or space and obviously body or emotion. Um, but yeah, this idea that it might be a sharing towards uh, a social possibility or at least someone else and not just toward yourself seems really urgent. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. For, for, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and maybe for others who we can't even visualize, yeah. which is the beauty of it all, which is why our futures matter so much. Uh, you know that we we kind of have to um, we do the best. It, it doesn't mean that I, I'm angelic or anything. I'm sure I make massive uh, fobs every 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 single day. Constantly, for me. You know, yeah. stumble through the whole thing <laughs> like <laughs> it's like fuck that up. Oops. Well, you know, <laughs> hopefully I get another chance or try to turn it back, turn it around somehow. But yeah. Yeah, that's part of it but, too. But but those moments where I recognize that I've made a mistake, you know, having kind of um, the dare to admit that, uh, <laughs> or recognize that, maybe you can't always make a, a, a restitution or, <laughs> you know, but uh, just a recognition that maybe that wasn't the best, I think um, uh, uh, is, 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 is decent enough. Um, yeah, and makes for a certain kind of alignment for others coming, for others who uh, have been, for others who are with us now. Um, and, and again, I guess it returns me always to this question of justness and justice, uh, which are embedded in kind of uh, animist practice. You know, um, I, I want to uh, always remember to be in justness with uh, myself and others and justice with myself and others and nature which is not separate uh, it's not a separate idea um, from the human yeah yeah that's nice Elaine Scarry who's the philosopher at Harvard that um, it doesn't matter that she's at Harvard that just is where she yeah. is now <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to call anything out like that. Um, but um, Anna Devere Smith was, had interviewed her as one of her subjects for one of her performance pieces. And she wrote this book that's called On Beauty and Being Just. And um, she has this idea that beauty um, expands in its own presence. Because when we come into the presence of beauty, we want to expand its possibility. And she calls that a certain kind of justness. Um, she's not interested in justice or sort of social justice or even racial mm. politics. That's not her thing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and she has the privilege to not necessarily care about that in ways that mm -hmm. most of us on the planet actually do care about that in a really urgent way. Um, mm. And though her idea that beauty and being just kind of expand because that is their nature uh, has been really helpful to me as I try to uh, rethink how beauty matters, how alignment works, what connection could be, and that it matters that there could be, um, as you say, a kind of generosity among us, um, mm -hmm. you know, that, that, that there's an actual um, willingness to give it a go and to step up, <laughs> to step up. <laughs> <laughs> I just step back. <laughs> step up, and 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 even perhaps you know, um, I'm I'm gonna get this wrong. It's it's a line from uh, from somewhere. Stop the planet, you know. Oh 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 oh, brother, the black race don't need you. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> just because you're not stepping up, um, you know. But I, you know, in 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 the yeah. in these things of love, generosity, I was. Also, um, listening to uh, some people talking about logistics, it was mostly around logistics and how, of course, the whole industry of logistics starts with the buying and selling of uh, Africans, and yeah. um, uh, you know, and 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 somehow the conversation was leading to uh, the League of Revolutionary Black Workers mm -hmm. in Detroit. 
Um, and uh, uh, I, I was clinging to this um, feeling like these are revolutionary times. Yeah. Could we uh, find it in ourselves to organize? <laughs> You know, is this a moment for the League of the Revolutionary Artistic Workers, whatever? You know, I think this league was particularly, it was, you know, around the motor car industry. That's right. Yeah. Um, you know, can we even think of uh, uh, this uh, um, kind of thinking of uh, a, a league of uh, revolutionary artistic workers? Uh, because in many ways, you know, we can't really go back to the way we were working, which it, it was problematic, um, you know, in the way it, uh, uh, you know, uses our labor um, and asks for us to be super heroic <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all the time. Um, you know, and, 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 and still leaves us without any kind of insurances or, or, or ability to own anything other than our imagination. You know, is this not a moment for us to think, you know, you know towards this? Um, I, I really want to believe that it is uh, uh, an opportunity uh, to, to, to organize, how can we, you know, in, in, you know, with this idea of love and, you know, that this is love, that it has to multiply like this to have each other's backs to step up. I think it's an imperative now, and I want to circle back to something you said right at the beginning. Who am I not to try? Yeah. Who, 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 who? <laughs> so I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, who, who am I not to try? I'm really, you know, so I want to uh, uh, thank you and acknowledge the work that you do, uh, you know, uh, uh, whether in, in gesture, moving, uh, uh, you know, uh, time-based practice or in writing and thinking and platforming. Um, you know, it's, it's such an act of love, generosity, May you continue to be blessed. <laughs> Thank you, Ed C. That's a big old heart. And um, it's just been super much a pleasure. And now we're going to stay organized. We're going to figure it out. And we got work to do. Come in. Thank you. So much love. <laughs> okay. Ciao, ciao. Yep. Good day. Thank you. Bye.